Welcome to Casio Chaos Theory, and welcome to part three of this in-depth Casio SA76 test and review. In this episode, we are going to investigate how we can take the already good monophonic sounds of the SA76 and improve them further by putting them through an inexpensive external effects unit. Originally, I was going to include this as a segment in the final SA76 review episode, but in true Casio Chaos Theory fashion, the more I explored the possibilities available using external effects, the more I found they had to offer. As such, I expanded my sonic experiments into a standalone episode so that I could show how effects can be applied to all the features of the SA76 and to demonstrate just how far you can take the sound coming from this little budget-friendly keyboard. I've also put a list of the episode contents and their timestamps in the description box down below for those that wish to jump to specific chapters or features that are covered in this video. As always, good stereo headphones or speakers are recommended rather than a cell phone speaker or small monophonic audio device to ensure that you get the best representation of the stereo audio that you are about to hear. You might be surprised at how impressive the Casio sound will become. Without further ado, let's jump in and start applying some external effects to the SA76. We've been listening to the SA76 through its monophonic line out through this mono cable into my audio interface. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to introduce this guy. This is a Behringer V-Amp and it's a virtual amplifier and also a virtual effects unit or effects unit rather. I should point out that I am using a Behringer V-Amp 2 simply because I happen to have one that I originally bought years ago to use with my guitars. I saw other people use similar virtual amplifier and effects units with lo-fi keyboards to good effect, so I thought I'd give the VAMP a try with my SA76. You can find these VAMPs on the used market at very affordable prices, and a quick look at the completed listing section on eBay indicates that the average going rate seems to be somewhere around 25 to 35 bucks plus shipping. And you can, of course, put any sound source through a V-Amp, so it's certainly a useful device to have in a home studio. Before I hook it up, I'm going to give you a little brief overview on what this thing can actually do and how it will affect the sound when we put the SA76 through it. This is the Behringer V-Amp, the second generation model. Before I go any further, let me plug it in. It doesn't unfortunately have an on off switch, so I have to disconnect the power when it's not in use. Uh, booting itself up. And before I go any further, I need to point out that flickering LEDs you see on the display, which is, I mean, sorry, on the camera, which is this display here and any other LEDs you see, that's due to the shutter on the camera. They're actually completely stable in real life. The V-Amp is basically in two halves. We have the amplifier, preamp, and speaker side here, or emulation section. And on this side, we have all the effects. I'm gonna turn this side off and bypass it rather, because we don't need to use any amp simulation or speaker simulation, and you can if you want to, if you want to get that extra effect if you're putting it through one of those classic um, amplifiers. But anyway, we're gonna turn it off because we just want the effect side. And to do so, I just have to press those two buttons together. And now that side is all switched off other than the volume and the master control. We are going to concentrate on this side, which is the effects. These are the effects that are available to us. And as I mentioned, they're all in stereo, and we've got everything from, let's say, chorus and compressor, compressor, auto wire, phaser, chorus, flanger, tremolo, rotary, echo, delay, ping pong delay, phaser, flanger, and delay, chorus and delay, chorus and delay, two. 
So whatever combination we want, we can select from, from here. We also have reverb. We can dial in how much reverb to apply. And there's different types of reverb which you set somewhere else. And then we can also decide how much of the effects we want to apply to the sound. So you have completely wet, so we can total effects applied and maybe 50% applied and then no effects at all. So that is the Behringer VAMP. Let's connect the SA76 to it and see how it affects the sound. I'm now going to connect the SA76 to the VAMP. And to do so, I've got these monophonic cables already connected to the input. And all I need to do is take out the original line out, making farty noises, plug this one in. Okay, so now we have the Behringer connected by this mono cable, mono signal, and it's got stereo out. So I've now got to go and change the cable. Let me move this camera. Okay, that's set now. Line out's now going through here into the Behringer input. And then the output is in stereo, it's coming from here. So now I've got to follow this cable all the way over here. Up to my audio interface, and that was the original connection. I can't do that now. I've got to put an adapter, like so. And now we have the cable, matching cable from that, which I will connect. So I'm running out of hands here. Uh, pardon me. Okay, right now the Behringer is connected. So let's see what it's going to do. That's going in quite nicely. First resets. Sound from the SA76 into the Behringer. Behringer is processing it using its DSP. Out of the Behringer. Into the audio interface. And into the DAW. And once again, I want to show you there's no VSTs whatsoever on the audio track that for the Behringer and the Casio SA76. It's completely and utterly, as it comes out to the SA76, into the Behringer VM, that's what you're hearing. And there's no other processing going on whatsoever. We have the SA76 connected to the Behringer V-Amp and right now the amplifier simulation section is bypassed so we're not using this side at all. This is the effects part of the V-Amp and I turned all the effects down to minimum so there's no effects being applied to the SA76 right now. So what you're going to hear now, or what I'm going to play now rather, is this is the SA76 completely dry with no effects applied. sounds just as I did when I demonstrated it previously. I'm now going to start adding some reverb. So take a listen to how the sound changes. It's quite a difference increase the amount of reverb that is being applied. So I'm in a giant concert hall now. I'm going to completely 
crazy and going to Brian Eno territory. So that's quite a change. And again, back to zero, no reverb at all. Some reverb. Increase the reverb. Sort of 50 50. And go completely crazy. a dramatic change in tone. I'm now going to play tone number 20 and just put some reverb on it just as we did with the with the piano sound. This is the acoustic guitar. Or is it? No it's not. Ignore me that wasn't. That was a piano. Okay, right, we're going to play turn number 20 and just apply some reverb to it, just the same way we did with the piano. This is how the sound comes across with no reverb. That was quite nice. And now we're going to apply a bit of reverb to it, a small room reverb. Reverb. And big reverb. I'm going to start off by showing you how we can apply reverb to change some of the patterns in the free sessions and the drums. I'm going to start with pattern number 10. And this one sounds, I'm going to turn the reverb all the way down. I think we're all with that, all the effects all the way down. Sounds like this. And that's just plain old. Monophonic with no reverb. Now I can start to increase reverb. Should we not hear the sound sort of opening, it's opening up a bit? And also it sounds as if we're playing in a bigger hall. And I can change the type of reverb. We're on the first setting, which I think is a small room. I'm going to jump up to number three. And here it sounds like it's in a bigger room now. If I go to number five, which is, I think it's cavernous. It's the, it's a, it's the biggest reverb. Here's lots and lots and lots of reverberation. Turn it down to number one. That just gives a nice little extra um, ambience to the actual sound. Gives it a little bit more depth and, and space. I'm going to try pattern number 20. And this one is with no reverb. And it sounds like this. A nice Latin sounding. And we're going to apply some reverb to this one as well. Start slowly increasing it. About halfway. And again, 
we hear the sound opening up. The more depth, the more space. Okay, jump up to a bigger, bigger room type reverb, number three. is one of the ethnic patterns. So let's have a listen to this with no reverb. Again, good start to apply the reverb. Increase the reverb to a bigger room, number three. to do a little bit of a demonstration of the drum pads to see how these sound and this is what they sound like when you just play them with no reverb okay, so let's give it a little bit of extra reverb to reverb number one Difference. Try number three, a bigger, bigger room reverb. And go up to number five again. the reverb as an effect in itself. Almost a bit of feedback going on there. That's nice. That's very nice. Let's go on to the next section. We can also put the, the free sessions through some reverb too, to give them a bit of a little bit of extra depth. I'm going to try, which one am I going to try? I'm going to try free session number 45. And it sounds like this, completely dry with no reverb. And right now, we've got the smallest, the, the minimal reverb. I'm going to start bringing it, bringing it in. the sound makes it wider compared with no reverb and then 50-50 and let's give it a bigger room
I'm going to turn all the effects down and I'm going to go to the drawbar organ, number 12. This is how this tone sounds completely dry. Sounds that it did when I demonstrated it previously. Now let's try this one and I'm applying a little bit of chorus and delay to it. So it's the same tone, but with chorus and delay added. Quite a change in tone again. Let's turn the reverb down a little bit. Very nice, very usable. This opens the sounds up quite a bit. And I've got another one. This, this preset uses the rotary speaker. And this is very sort of 60s sort of sounding, that classic dropout walker and going through a Leslie type speaker. I like that. The next tone is number 14. This is one of the organ tones and this is how it sounds dry. some phaser and some reverb and this almost takes a sound into a vintage string synthesizer territory have a listen <laughs> Vintage Jean-Michel Jarre again, sort of his oxygen, oxygen, however you pronounce it, period. That's a nice sound. It takes the sound into, gives it so much more character. Let's go to one of my favorite sounds and the, the string ensemble number 40. And again, I'm going to turn all the effects off. I should actually apply the effect first there with effect E. And this is, again, this is the SA76 completely dry with going through the effects unit, but the effects are all basically switched off. <laughs> It's all in mono. Now, I'm going to apply this phaser with some reverb.
Holly Moog, just think. Gary Newman could have had a Casio SA76 and a Behringer VM instead of lugging around that huge polymog of his to do cars and replicas and so on. But seriously, this wasn't available back in 1979 when he wrote that song. But what a lovely sound that is. It really almost does sound like a polymog. Okay, turn number 40, the string sound again. And I'm going to put it through flanger and reverb this quick quick recap this is how it sounds with no effects <laughs> interesting effect how how much different it is to the phaser but it, again it just adds to the sound it gives it a whole new dimension and very very usable indeed i'm going to put turn number 69 which is one of the synthesizer sounds and we're going to play it through a flanger and reverb so First of all, let's let's see see how it sounds with no effects. So it's a nice kind of synth sound, but if we put some flanger and reverb on it, it sounds very different. That's a very nice sound that it, it takes the sound into a different place. Gives it almost almost into Van Gerdes territory. Almost. Kind of. I mean as much as you can with a LLS A76 and a Behringer V amp. Let's also try that nice Christmassy sounding synthesizer tone number 72. Once again. Turn all the effects off. This is the sound, number 72, tone 72, completely dry. And now we're going to.
to apply some phaser and some reverb. SA76 going through the Behringer V amp. a difference that's really excellent sort of ambient type of uh, effect sort of thing that maybe Ryan Eno might have used or Philip Glass maybe um, Hans Zimmer even perhaps certainly some of his earlier soundtrack work but what a difference putting the SA-76 through external effects how, how much this really completely opens up the sound. I mean, of course, it does matter that the SA76 has a good sound in the first place for the VAMP to work with. So it's a combination of the two. But I, I wanted to show you just what you could do when you put a humble little SA76 through a very inexpensive virtual amplifier or effects unit to see how much difference you can make to the sound. I hope that in this episode, I've been able to demonstrate just how much we can take the SA76's sound and then expand it to something that wouldn't be out of place on many pro-level recordings, simply by using a very affordable, budget-friendly effects unit. Of course, it's no secret that effects were often the magic ingredient on some well-known studio recordings, and that clever use of them by producers such as Martin Rushant, who produced the Human League's Dare album, and Trevor Horn, who produced The Buggles and Frankie Goes to Hollywood, both of them made full use of effects in the studio to make groundbreaking and incredible sounding iconic records. It's also worth noting that many classic synthesizers often only sounded the way they did on these hit records thanks to the clever use of effects. In fact, most of the legendary golden era analog synths were largely monophonic and most had no built-in effects at all. A few had the ability of routing keyboard splits to left and right channels, and later on, analog stereo chorus became probably the most common incorporated effect until the digital age kicked in. Saying that, even the first generation Yamaha DX7 didn't have any built-in effects, surprisingly. So you could begin to appreciate just how many of those classic synth pop records relied on external effects to make them sound the way they did. Therefore, to give your little Casio keyboard sound a lift and to take it into another dimension, put it through and experiment with an effects unit like a Behringer V-Amp. Of course, there are plenty of other similar units out there from the likes of Korg, Line 6, Boss and Zoom for instance, so take your pick. And if you are DAW software orientated, you can of course use VSTs for the same effects. Though some of the older budget hardware multi-effects units can actually be picked up for less than the cost of a single VST. As mentioned earlier, I use the Behringer for no other reason other than I happen to have it lying around. And I'm glad I did, as I was very pleasantly surprised at how much I could expand and improve on the SA76's already good sounds. In the fourth and final part of my in-depth SA76 review, I will cover the remaining few features that it has to offer, critique some of its strengths and weaknesses, see what rivals it is up against out there at this end of the market, and also suggest some areas that could be improved upon 
and what features I would like to see added. Who knows, maybe Cassia is listening. And that's it for this video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, please press the like button. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing. And remember, keep it Casio.